Welcome back to El Duende Satirico del Día, where we uncover the truths hidden beneath the surface. Today, we dive into the controversial documentary, The Last Hours of Mario Biondo. Is Netflix pulling the strings of manipulation? Let's dissect the story. In a twist reminiscent of canned laughter in a sitcom, The Last Hours of Mario Biondo appears to be directing our emotions like a puppeteer. Just as canned laughter cues us to laugh, here, it's instructing us when to swap compassion for rejection. Netflix touted this as a groundbreaking, true crime, series promising new revelations, yet the reality is far from it. Prepare for a roller coaster ride of insights. Right from the start, the official version is swallowed whole, with a parade of testimonies relentlessly hammering the suicide theory. The words of the Biondo family are twisted and distorted into a concoction of grief-induced delusions. And here's the kicker, every time someone dares to disagree, out comes the arsenal of the caught-in-the-act images from the Biondo vault. Let's take a detour and unravel the origins of this perplexing project. Why on earth would Guillermo Gomez Raquel Sanchez Silva's former manager want to produce this documentary and play the role of the all-knowing narrator? We're left pondering this mystery. Are we witnessing a mother's obsession or a desperate cry for answers? There's a conspicuous absence of Enrique, Raquel Sanchez Silva's cousin, who accessed Mario's computer remotely and wiped away almost a terabyte of data. Not to mention the spy program lurking on the cameraman's device. Raquel Sanchez Silva's statements before the Italian justice system are missing, leaving us with a curious case of selective memory. And what about that alleged drug dealer? The truth dances just outside the frame. We delve into the dark art of editing as we uncover the sinister intentions. Remember when Santina shared those haunting images of her son's lifeless body? Guillermo Gomez Sanchao labels it as repugnant, but T. Those very images revealed a telltale mark of a complete hanging around Mario's neck which some experts argue contradicts the theory of partial hanging. Mario calls Raquel at 4 in the morning, and she doesn't return his call until 2 in the afternoon. However, she tells one of Mario's co-workers that she's very concerned about him and hasn't been able to reach him all morning. As we wrap up our exploration, we unveil the calculated manipulation lurking within the last hours of Mario Biondo. Netflix may have tried to script our emotions, but we remain the discerning audience, ready to uncover the truth. Stay tuned for more revelations, only on El Duende Satirico del Dia. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to stay informed. Until next time.